um, I'm using a MySQL database at the back end, which doesn't really matter in this case. Okay, let's get into it. So what I'm doing first here, my first step is a table input. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the customer ID and the order date and the email addresses from orders table. Uh, if I do a quick preview here, let me just a couple of rows. Maybe not. That didn't come up too quickly. Um, so this, in the next step, I, uh, step I'm identifying unique roles because for every customer I will have several um, orders and maybe on the same order date, but I'm just interested in in the date. And this is the magic step that we need to talk about. Um, so what this does is it goes one row back or forwards, or actually it can go any number of rows back and forwards, and get the information from a previous row. So typically we can make calculations between different columns of the data set, but in this case we can do a make, have a calculation between the different rows of the same column. I'm just going to disable a few last steps in this process. So if we have a look at the data in here at this stage, we will see that for this customer we have all these different order dates. So what I want to get is the difference in days between the first order date, that's when the customer first made an order with us, and the second order. And so I want to calculate these two days here in between. So what I'm going to use is called an analytic query step. I'm grouping by customer ID and email, and I'm looking at order date, and I'm going backwards and forwards to get the previous order date and the next order date. So what happens at this stage? We can see that, for example, this order was the first one for this client, so they didn't have a previous order date, and the next order date is obviously this one. And for this order, we have a previous one, now we have a next one, and so on. Okay. So once we have those dates in different columns, we can make calculations, as usual, between the different columns. So what we're doing in the next step we're filtering out everything, all the records, where previous order date is null. So if it's not null, it will go to the step called following orders. If it is null, it will go to first order, because if there's no previous order, then obviously this is our first order. But if it's not the first order, if the previous order date actually exists, I will use the calculator step, and I'm using the calculation one date minus the other date, and I just calculate the difference between the order date and the previous order date. Right, so have a look at my data at this stage. I see, for example, that my order date, the, the um, previous order date that goes with it, and there is a difference of 33 days between it. So we went from January the 1st to the 3rd of February, I'll just believe it's about 33 days. Looks about right. Um, so what we're doing at the top here is we're saying interval is null because there is a it's a first order, therefore there hasn't been any previous order, therefore we can't calculate an interval for that first order. Okay, so at this stage we will have, again, we're just bringing all the orders together, the first ones and the repeating orders, and we have the intervals between the orders. What we're doing next is getting the last order, so the latest order of this customer, which is what we're doing here. So we're saying if the next order date is null, there hasn't been any next order, which means this is the latest order of the customer. It's a very simple logic. Um, and so we're filtering out only those latest dates, the latest orders. We're also using a step called get system data to get today's date. And what we're going to do 
is compare the today's date with the latest order date of a customer and obviously calculate the days since the last order. So for example, for this customer, the average interval is 7. Sorry, that, yeah. the, the interval before the last order is 7. The days since the last order, 11. So this customer hasn't ordered anything with us for 11 days. Okay, so this, uh, this is what we're doing here at the bottom, just calculating when was the last order, how many days ago. What we're doing in this top bit is we're taking all the, the same set of data and we're getting the average of the interval. So we don't want the, just the latest interval between last two orders, but we're taking all the orders of the customer and we're saying, oh, what's the average time between the orders for this particular customer? And that's why we're grouping by customer ID in the email. So at this stage, I can see that, say, this customer is average in eight days, this customer average in three days, and all there, all the different averages. So we see in this in this data set, which is a just a gener um, randomly generated data set, we see that clients place orders quite often, every couple of days. Which is excellent. So now what we're doing here is here on the top we have the interval between orders, so the average, and down here we have the date since the last order. And we combine this information using the lookup step. Uh, what we'll see here, we we'll get the average interval and we get the date since last order. So in the next step, what we want to do is to say that the day, if the time elapsed since the last order is more than twice the average interval, so in this case it would be 16, then we want to send an email to that client to encourage them to come back to us and place an order. So, and this lookup step is just based on the customer ID, getting the last order date and the date since last order from the stream to combine it with this one. So what we're doing here is a mail indicator. It's a very simple calculation. So we set um, a field value to number two because that's what we want to multiply our average interval with. And then we say, okay, so our average interval between two orders multiplied by two minus days since last order. And then based on that, whether it's a positive or negative number, we make a decision whether to send a reminder email or not. So either not sending an email, which just does nothing, or for this set of clients, we're going to send a reminder email. So if we have a look here. So these are all the negative numbers. That means that the time elapsed since last order is less than the double average. And so we're going to send emails to all these clients. Now, for the email setup, we need to prepare a few things. So we need to prepare our SMTP server, our port number, um, the subject of the email, and the actual text of the email, as well as the from address. We're then using a step called email, send mail. Um, and so all these fields, they need to be actual fields. I couldn't just type in um, an email address in here and just hard code it. So that's why we have we had to add them using the add constant value step. And so here I'm just reusing all the fields that I have prepared, the SMTP server and the port number. Um, in this case, I'm using HTML format in the email. Um, and my, so this the subject comment is the actual email text. Um, so that's my text field. I'm not attaching any files, but I'm attaching or embedding an image into my email. So let me just show what, um, what it looks like. So first we'll do this one. This last step is, you will have noticed, when I did preview here, 
And quite a few of these emails are obviously not real email addresses just because they're randomly generated. But it happens in real life that sometimes email addresses are wrong. So in that case, the email will not get sent and this will fail. And so what I'm doing is when I draw the hop, I'll do it again, say error handling of step. So the hop becomes red. And that means that any email address or any emails that couldn't be processed, the address goes into this text file so that I can afterwards just go in and have a look which email addresses have failed and maybe fall off with my customers. Okay? So if I just run this whole process once, and it just takes a little bit of time because of the email steps, so that's the one that's taking a few seconds. And I'm going to go and have a look at my emails because one of the addresses I've actually set it up to email to myself. And so we see, oh, that's the latest, just came in. So to myself from automated reporting, I have this um, Miski, check our latest specials. And I've got a little picture down here and if I click on the picture, it takes me to our website. Um, let's have a look how we've created this email. So what sits in the email as a um, under email message is a comment, which is the actual content of the email. It's a field called text. The field called text is configured here. And it's a little bit small, but if I just put that into a text editor. So we'll see this is actually just a normal HTML email, an HTML page that we embed into the email. The interesting bit also is this picture, how we reference this picture. So what happens is under embedded images, I've selected a picture which is somewhere on my server and I give it a content ID, promo pic for picture, and that's where I can reference this content ID in my HTML text and that creates that pretty email. And so you can go crazy and create any fancy HTML email in here and it will just go automatically go out. So this relatively straightforward process goes the whole way from getting the customer data from the database, calculating the previous and the next order dates and the dates between the time in days between the orders. Um, it calculates the days since the last order. And then we're saying based on those two numbers, send an email to client or not. And then we just send an email to client with a HTML in HTML format with pictures and whatever we need. And any email addresses that didn't look right go into the text file. And that's it with my little demo about how to calculate time between orders. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Julia. Um, is there any questions from anybody? All right, we'll just wait a couple more moments to see whether uh, Winston or Haley comes up with a question to ask. And I'm assuming they don't have any questions because they're just sitting here, well, Haley's not here and Winston's sitting here smiling. So we'll call that the end of the session. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you